Sorry, that just Don't see that are on thus far. Thank you for joining us. We'll give it about two minutes or so for um, so we can at least get to quorum. And I'll enter in. Annette, you you thought that we were going to have a quorum, didn't you, from the RSVPs? Yes, I did. So from the RSVPs, we had quorum yesterday. Or maybe forgot, or just finishing up lunch or other meetings. We'll. Mm -hmm. It's 12.03, I'll give it to about 12.05, 12.07-ish. Hang in there with us for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep, we will go to the next step. Oh, there we go. Ah, okay. I think we're there. Okay. Happy Friday, everybody. Okay. We have quorum. We're going to get started. If those can catch up with us. Welcome to our Mental Health Care Advisory Committee meeting. It's good to see everybody. Hope everyone has a happy new year. We didn't have January's meeting officially. So it's good to see everybody so we can proceed forward with our business today. I will start with attendance. Harley Fleege. David Carnahan. He was on mute. Dr. Fowles. I'm here. Good to see you. Here. 
the top. There's D. Okay. Happy Buzzy. Monica Curry. I'm here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Wilson. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, too. Mr. Thompson. Here, and I'm going off camera so I can finish eating my lunch. <laughs> okay. And the cold water. Um, although the person is not present today, I just wanted to make an announcement as far as introductions go. Um, Governor Hobbs has selected a new um, director for DiFi. Her name is Barbara Richardson. Um, she will start March the 6th, but I want everyone to be aware. Our current interim director is Shane Foster. So we are in transition and I want everyone to be aware that we are moving forward and things are are moving forward in our department and someone has been selected. So hopefully she'll be on our next meeting so she can be introduced to the committee. All right, um, next slide, Ellie. So as far as the media update, Ellie, if you can give me, if I can share my screen or maybe I can share now. Um, we are in the process of doing updates for uh, the <coughs> website, and it, it is a process. And so, but one of the things I do want to show you, which we'll talk about a little bit later, is we actually have we've added a reporting page to our website, which is active because. The mental health parity reports are due in less than a month, so that's very exciting. Lynette, you're good to share now. Okay, thank you. Can everyone see that? Yes. So this is the landing page for our mental health parity um, page. But if you scroll down, you have a new area right here um, about reporting requirements. Click that. It talks about all the reporting requirements that the industry is going to have to do, which is based on the rule that was adopted. Then here is the form. And I just want to show you, and we'll get into a deeper discussion if I'm reading a little bit later. But here is the we created a checklist if the industry wants to use this and some guidelines and things like that. Um, so that is available, it's live, it's, it's current. So if anyone um, wants to direct someone to the page for that part of it, that is. But the other pieces are refreshing, like the members and, and things like that. So I want everyone to be aware that that's active. I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, um, Aaron. Uh, no, but I, well, I guess the only thing I, I, you know, I would add is uh, just that. Well, the checklist is a tool for insurers to use to facilitate the reporting that's required by um, the Jake's Law regulation. The, the checklist might be of interest to non insurers um, uh, because it'll just give them some insight into the, the kind of information that the insurers will be reporting to the department. But I would also just remind everybody that unlike other states in Arizona, the legislature um, made these reports confidential. So um, I know in other states, these reports have been, you know, published on the insurance department's website uh, and they're really a lot of transparency around it. Um, that that is not going to be the case in Arizona, but the department is required uh, to publish some information um, about any 
you know, enforcement actions we take um, on an annual basis. So I would, uh, I would guess that um, by this time next year, um, to the extent that there are any uh, enforcement actions related to any of this, that that information would be available. So just a, just a reminder about that. Thanks. For, for Sherry, um, I don't know if I don't see Joshua or go to the next slide. Let Lynette, the other thing I, I would uh, maybe, I think we kind of highlighted, just touched on this last time very, very briefly, but a lot of folks weren't on the call, so I'll say it again. On the Department's Mental Health Parity webpage, that page that Lynette just had up, that main page, um, there is a report that the department published um, oh, yeah. that is kind of a, 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 a summary of all of the um, activities that the department has been undertaking since the enactment of Jake's law. Um, and um, so I would just invite people to, to take a look at that if they're interested. It's, I think it's just referred to as the mental health parity report link. Thanks. I don't see Joshua or Jessica on for their sections. I will um, highlight there was, I sent out the PowerPoint about the suicide prevention um, team and that what Josh is doing at ADHS. And also um, for Jessica's part, there was a call. If you're, if anyone on this team or in the public is interested in, um, being a part of the suicide mortality review team, um, there is a call for that for members. That information is listed out to the committee. So if anyone is interested, I know it's also posted as well, um, I believe on the website at access. And I can put, I can send that information out as well. But if you're interested in that or want to have input on that or participate on that team, they are having a call for um, committee members for that as well, which um, I think from the committee, I know some people have lots of questions and it may be very helpful um, to be a part of that and offer input for the different perspectives that we, we have industry providers and family members. So if they pop on later, we will come back to them. Forward, next slide. And so reporting that we, we really touched upon that. So we have um, developed the reporting guidelines. They are for the industry. They have been put in SERV. We've done a um, like a training session in SERV um, with the industry um, on how to submit. Um, we're answering questions. We're in the process of developing an FAQ. We've gotten some from different uh, members from the industry. And so as we get more questions and as as it develops, we will post the FAQ for reporting on our website as well. Um, we figure that some of these questions are going to be similar, um, just asking for clarification about reporting, what certain terms mean, and things of that nature. And we want everybody to be clear, this is our first run. Um, the first reports are due on the 15th. We are, you know, we're excited and, and we just don't know it's going to be an adventure. We don't know what we're going to receive. Um, so. I am excited to see the data and to go through it and to, to analyze it and see what happens as we put out reports. But it is all the work that has been done even prior to me coming on board with Jake's Law and the rules and the writing and, and getting it through, um, it's here. So if anyone prior to me coming, we can applaud ourselves, it's gotten through um, and we are on the verge of reports now. So I'm excited. I don't know if anyone else is excited. Maybe it's just me because I'm a data geek and that's fine. <laughs> but, um, and we will keep you posted as we um, get information and highlight any trends and things like that. So I don't know if anyone has any questions or Aaron, if you have anything to add to the reporting piece. Uh, no. 
I only that I guess if you know if any of the insurers on the call do have any uh, questions. Um, Kathy Busby says she can't get in. I just got a text, a mess, an email from her. So. Um, uh, if, if any of the in, insurers on the call do have questions about the report, you guys all know how to get a hold of us uh, as you're in the final stages of putting that together. Don't hesitate to ask questions, and we'll try to get back to you quickly. I also see that Nicole Porter is needs to be moved to a panelist on the agenda. All right. Uh, next slide. Hi. <laughs> Hi, welcome. Thank you. That is our agenda. We, I know Aaron, you wanted to touch up on something and then I'll open it up for um, if people have agenda items or top for future topics for our agenda. I know that you also wanted to um, touch up on a topic as well. Okay, now can you hear me? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I guess I, the only thing I wanted to mention um, with, with this um, variety of folks on the call, let me see, I can take myself off. Um, there we go. Um, sorry, I have to do audio on my phone and I'm, I'm working uh, from Tucson today, so. Um, um, there's, you know, the legislature is in session and I know I saw at least one bill related to mental health parity stuff. So I, I, I wanted to toss out for the advisory committee um, if there was any, you know, if there is any legislation that this group wants to kind of talk about uh, either now or after it, if it becomes law, we, you know, I, it feels like this uh, group might be an interesting place to talk about some of those things. Um, certainly, um, if there is anything that is enacted, uh, the department would be analyzing it uh, for any implications on our regulatory activities uh, or, you know, insurer requirements, et cetera, and we could certainly provide an over. And we lost, or you hit me by mistake. We can't hear you. Erin, I'm seeing your um, your lips move, but we couldn't hear you. And you're unmuted on my end here. While she's trying to get her audio reconnected, does anyone from the committee have any future topics they would like to have on the agenda for the next meeting? Nothing special? Um, Lynette, there is some information, or there was a question in the chat. I don't know. I think you were the one that said you couldn't see it, and it is, what is the nature of the legislation relating to the um, MHPAEA? Um, from, from Mary, yes. Okay. How many?
I would add for next meeting, um, watching the telehealth um, information and bill or rules, anything related to that coming through. I feel that that could possibly impact Nokia depending on how it's filled or what they're allowing, audio only, and things like that. And so, so that telehealth is still ever evolving. And it's something we just need to be aware about with the impact of systems and delivery of care. Also, also to go ahead. Also, too, I know that the um, Association of Counselors, as well as NASW, on the national level, there's um, there's federal legislation that for compacts coming through. So, I know some people call it reciprocity, but there are some states that have signed on nationally to have compacts for licensure for therapists. And so what we probably want to either discuss it, watch it, maybe discussion in the future, um, what that means for Arizona, what that means for um, telehealth platforms as and payment models and things like that. I think there are seven, eight states for the counseling side. I know for social work, um, there are a few more. But that is moving through um, national legislation, and they're lobbying for that right now. That there be a, a federal compact, and as far as testing for the state and how that will impact behavioral health delivery. So, I know some states want to throw out testing altogether, and vice, and some want to keep have a keep the testing. So, all that could indirectly impact Nokia. But just keep quiet. Question I heard. Aaron, is that you? It's Kathy Busby. Hi, Kathy. Hi. I finally got in. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with us. Yeah. I think we may have lost Aaron. Uh, so, Lynette, this is Mary Kaczynski. Um, do you know the nature of the legislation that um, that relates to MAPIA, uh, what, what they're proposing? Because, um, you know, it might have some impact on our rulemaking. Or... Um, so it's, it's important not... to kind of monitor any legislation. I do not. Erin was, I know okay. she was thinking about a specific bill, but I'm not sure which one she was going to reference. I see she's back on. Okay. If you do you know the bill number by any chance, I could look it up myself. You don't. Okay, that's fine. I can I can ask Erin. Uh, Maybe she can give me the info. Info. Are you back with us? Back in. Okay. Um, if there are not any future topics, concerns, or comments, anything. Oh, before I forget, um, Dr. Files, thank you for sending me the resume. If anyone is interested or you feel someone have good input for our committee, we are down a member. And so um, we, and it, it's a family member position. So we are looking for um, one more person for the committee. So anyone. In the public or anyone on the committee that we're going to take some more resumes, they can send it to the impact of email or they can, you can email me directly. And we are going to start doing like, I guess, vetting or interviews um, so we can fill that last spot on our committee. If you have someone, um, you can send me their information or they can reach out to me directly with their interests so we can round out our committee. 
any questions, comments, concerns? Okay. Well, take you know, an hour of your day back. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. More to come. See it most up. Our next meeting will be May 19th. Hope everyone has a fantastic weekend and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank Have you so much, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you, Lana. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.